Could the Twin Cities be the new frontier of genetic discovery? That is the vision of one St. Paul-based company. It believes all the pieces are in place to do things like increase the world's food supply and cure diseases like Alzheimer's and cancer. Another breakthrough this company is working on could give people who need transplants their own personal pig to grow an organ. Our morning news anchor Chris Eggert gives you an in-depth look at this work with access to facilities that few have ever seen. Will the Twin Cities be to genetics what Silicon Valley is to computing? That's the idea we set out to look into. Tonight we take you to the Bay Area where a Minnesota company's scientific breakthrough could change the egg industry as we know it. About an hour northeast of here at a nondescript research farm at the University of California, Davis, are two very important cattle. Their beginnings go back a few years to some tiny little cells in this St. Paul lab. Those cells were implanted into two cattle embryos, and then those two eggs were put into two surrogate cows to be born without actual parents. These cattle are cloned. So is it cool to be able to see them in person? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's great uh, to see that we've actually been able to make something uh, using our technology and make something better than it was before. So you like that, huh? The part you can't itch. Ted Sonstegard is a researcher for a small St. Paul-based company called Recombinetics. They've used a process called gene editing to be able to develop the cattle to be born without horns. A scientific breakthrough that's so noteworthy, a year ago, these two were on the cover of the New York Times. Dehorning methods are viewed by many as inhumane, and the founder of Recombinetics knew that he could do something about it in his lab. It's a pretty compelling problem. There's 5 million cattle a year in the U.S. that have their horns taken off. Um, it's not a nice process. The cows that provide milk for your family are subjected to dehorning every year. Hornless or pulled cattle already exist, but the ones who are crossbred using traditional methods aren't as good at producing milk. Recombinetics researchers would like to one day see their gene-edited cattle in barns all across the U.S. The producer no longer has to dehorn his calves at birth. The food distributor knows that the animals were treated humanely in, in producing the milk and the same with the consumers. And, uh, you know, most importantly, the animals don't suffer at all. So these are happier cattle? Yeah, for sure. They look like normal animals. Right. Happier cattle that can also help to solve the world's hunger problem. They've also gene-edited double-muscled cattle that can produce between 7 and 30 percent more beef. Check the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. They can also gene-edit cows that produce more milk and cattle that thrive in hot climates, when most breeds don't. And it's been quite an exciting time. Recombinetic CSO Scott Farenkrug describes it as using a molecular scissors to cut and splice the traits that they're looking for, a genetic book of life. That book en encodes all the instructions for what makes you. In gene editing, we have the ability to go to the, well, actually the right volume uh, of that, say, encyclopedia of life, uh, the right page, the right paragraph, right sentence, and change exactly the letter that we want to change. So the FDA has not said yet where it stands on gene-edited animals. What do you say to the public about whether or not this is safe to consume? Because I know people get a certain thing in their head. I understand, and, and you know, we've really tried to avoid this being misperceived as a, a GMO. It's not putting a plant gene into an animal or a mouse gene into a fish. This is changing a letter in the book of life of one cattle to look like the book of life of another cattle. So it really, it's perfectly safe. We've been eating these animals with these letters in, that, in their book for a thousand years, even longer, some of these traits. And cattle aren't the only livestock that Recombinetics is working with. And that brings us here to this top secret farm west of the Twin Cities. Recombinetics researchers like Adrian Watson believe that their gene editing methods with these pigs are a quicker and less expensive way to allow them to develop drugs and medical devices to treat chronic diseases like cancer, cardiovascular disease, and Alzheimer's. And hopefully help develop um, therapeutics and eventually cures for diseases. Rare diseases like this is amazing. And get this. The company also sees a day when, in the long term, pigs like these could be used to provide human patients with cells, tissues, even organs. And for the first time, they revealed to us a specific timeline for when this work could begin. 
to move this forward with the objective of being into clinical trials in six years uh, for various uh, organs and tissues. I mean, that's, that's not that far off. It's not. For example, a type 1 diabetic in need of a transplant could have their stem cells used to grow a pancreas for transplant inside their own personal pig and dramatically reduce the chances of rejection. They're the ideas of science fiction. Yeah, I can hardly believe it either. To be honest, I've waited my whole career for a moment like this. It's the new frontier of genetic discovery right here in Minnesota. Chris Eggert, 5 Eyewitness News. And Recombinetic says its work has the potential to bring billions of dollars to the local economy. They plan to work with our rich agriculture industry here, the U of M and Mayo Clinic, along with medical device and food companies here in Minnesota.